Yeah, and the view from there obviously we did not start it and everything. So yeah. today is the 8th of August uh, 2008. It's 080808. I'm told the Russians believe it's a very lucky day and so do the Chinese. They have a small event going on in Beijing today and all. Uh, I'm extrapolating this and I'm assuming that this is obviously also a lucky day for a launch of a book such as this. Let me start by saying that um, this is probably one of the best collections of thoughts of a contemporary Indian politician that I've read in recent times. As someone who's a recent entrant into politics, albeit not at the same level, scale and quality of Mr. Chidambaram, but, but a veteran of uh, no doubt being subjected to politics and politicians for the last 15 years, I can recommend this book as good, high quality writing from a man who is quite well known otherwise for his precise and clear thoughts on a variety of issues ranging from the economy to security. Before I get into the book itself, let me just try and set up why I think this book is an important read for most people, especially those of you who care about the direction our country is taking. This is just marketing pitches. But unfortunately, I think along the line, we have started believing this rhetoric and believing that our twist with this greatness is somehow automatic, predestined, and preordained. And we will get there no matter what if we just continue doing what we are doing for the next few more years. From my perspective, and I believe in this very strongly, I've written about this and I've spoken about this, this eventual destination of India's greatness is not as automatic or slam dunk or a done deal as it is, as we think it is. There's one strong force standing between this dream, aspiration of a greater India and today. And that I believe, in my little humble view, that that indomitable force that's holding us back is the politics of India, the politicians of the leaders of India, and most importantly, the political agenda of the various governments of India. I happened to say this once about a few years ago on one of those hugely terrible Delhi TV shows, and I was mauled almost by the group of intellectuals in that group and wrongly criticized for being pessimistic about India's democracy and the inherent strength of our democracy. <laughs> Nevertheless, I maintain my view. And as some of you know, even the Supreme Court recently expressed its frustration with our politics, saying that even God can't save India. That may be a bit of a stretch, given that Supreme Court being supreme and all, I don't think they have a direct line to God yet, <laughs> even though they sometimes behave that way. My view on this is because today's political debate has been reduced to only issues like national security, nuclear deal, religion, loan waiver, petroleum and fertilizer subsidies, etc. All important issues. I'm not arguing. I don't want to get into an argument on that. But the real nuanced issues of our nation and its governance are completely absent from mainstream discussion and debate agendas. And in a bitterly divided polity of personalities and other ideologies, I believe, a common economic vision and agenda which finds place in the political ideology and documentation or manifestos of mainstream political parties is what we all desperately need to ensure, what we need to ensure our future. This is not a trivial challenge, I accept. Uh, I've tried this in my own way in the past. But I believe it is in this context that you should read this book and you should look at this book. The need to develop uh, a common 